Okay, so how does Shakespeare... Let's keep this nice and simple. Present Macbeth in the opening scenes. Question mark. Okay, and then I'm going to just put brackets 1.1 to 1.4 because that's what we've done. Okay, so how does Macbeth, no, how does Shakespeare present Macbeth in the opening scenes? So drop that down. So we're going to kind of annotate around this and make sure you've got lots of space available to you. So what's the question about? What is the question about, Miles? Um, how Shakespeare represents Macbeth. You've just repeated the question. Which word tells us what the question is about? Um, nope. Lily? Macbeth. Nope. Archie? Uh, how? Nope. Ellie? Please. Nope. Edie? Please. Nope. Holly? Please. Shakespeare! The question is all about Shakespeare. It's the Shakespeare show. And that's the focus of the question. Okay? Because it's not about Macbeth. Macbeth isn't a thing. Macbeth is just an idea. He's just a, a person, a character in a story. That's all it is. Okay? We don't need the fun facts of the original one. Completely irrelevant. Do not put that in. Okay, that's a fun fact. You take it to a party. This one, the question is about him and the things he's doing. Yeah? Focus is about... Okay? So what does Shakespeare do in the story to show us Macbeth's character? Okay, so really we've, we've rewritten the question, haven't we? So we've rewritten the question, rather than how does Shakespeare present Macbeth in the opening scenes, what does Shakespeare do in the story to show us Macbeth's character? And that's fine to rewrite it because we're doing the same thing. So from here, remembering, we need to think about the what does Shakespeare do? How on earth has he done it? And what is the point? Okay. I'm going to introduce where. Okay. And it's not simply that I want you to locate it in the play. I want you to talk about where does this go? Okay. Because we've got four scenes to play with, you could mention the fact that his name is marked by the witches when they decide that that's where they're going to meet and it's the oath putting scene and we, we don't even meet him but we hear from him for the very first time from the witches. Where does this go? Where, where does this move to? Is it just that and then kind of we leave the room? Where is this going to progress and develop into? So we're looking at the words like develop, progress, Enhance. Okay, look up at it on a thesaurus, see other words that you might be able to use with that because it's the process. We're building up, that's another one. Remember what we're building up for. Think about sort of how Banquo speaks about Macbeth and the words he uses all through Act 1, Scene 2, and then to 3. And then we've got fall with Macbeth. Where's this heading? Well, we're, we're heading because we expect that the fall is going to be massive, which we've already mentioned and we've talked about. Okay. So, this bit here. What does Shakespeare do in the story to show us Macbeth? So what's the first thing? Let's kind of do a bit of a timeline. What's the first part? What's the first thing we learn about Macbeth, Ellie? Okay. First part. 
which is connection. Okay, where does that then take us? What then happens? What, how do we build up our presentation sheets? But how, movement, but how do we develop? How does this progress? How does this enhance? Eating? Okay, so war hero. Okay, battlefield. Uh, God, lowercase g. Okay. Next. What's next in, in, our, in our development, our progress of his character? So that's really the start of one, two, isn't it? So that's one, one. That's the start of one, two. Who talks to us about this? Look in your, it, the answers are in your plane. That's where all of your answers are. I'm not asking you to pluck something out of the air or guess. Ella? No. Look in your plane. Don't guess. There's no reason why anyone is guessing. Unless you actually weren't paying attention in the first place. Ellie. It's the, it's the captain. Remember, he, what bloody man is this? He's the one that gives us all this flipping gory detail, and that's why I stabbed Theo with a ruler. Well, sort of. Okay? Now, after you've heard that bit, now, have we met him yet? No, he's still absent. So we're hearing about him before we see him. Is that a what is Shakespeare doing? Yeah, that is. Dom? He's showing us a form Nice. He's making us form an opinion. He's given us left, he's given us right, he's going to give us a bit of an upside downy bit. And at the end of this here, ultimately, we don't know which way we're going. We're very, very confused. We're really rather concerned. And we don't know where this is heading. I mean, who is he? So we're, no, we're in no better position than we were at the beginning. We're just as confused about what's going on. Okay, so after this bit here, the war hero, the battle god, then what do we learn about him? Anyone? Edie? Um, he's like, in person with witches, because he's got some Nope, it's too soon. You're too far on. We've got there's loads more stuff along here. Loads more stuff. Archie? Uh, he kills McDonald's. Yep, so that's still, that's coming up. The, the battlefield dog. Dog? God. Sorry? He still hasn't appeared. Yeah? Where do we go next? Edie? Ellie? Edie? No! Ellie! What? You! With a hair on. He's gonna uh, be the king's cordial. Okay, yeah. So we, we've got the seventh cordial. A little bit before that. Go into your copies of the play. There are too many of you and staring blankly at me. Look in your play. Go to the first part of Act 1, Scene 2. Look at where the bloody, what bloody man is that speech. Then go on a little bit further. What else do we know about Macbeth? How else has he shown to us? Holly? Is that the sergeant? Sergeant. Sergeant. What does the sergeant say? Um... What do we learn from the sergeant? Yep, so again, that's, that's sort of more confirmation of the battlefield. That's all right. E.G., Ellie. Oh. He has, like, a gruesome side. He's split that bow in half. Yep, so that's adding to this bit here. Okay, keep going. Move on from the soldier. Move on from the captain or the sergeant. Where else? What else do we learn? E.G.? Nope. Nope, too far. This is one of the reasons why we need to do this. You're still in Act 1, Scene 2. So that we've done what bloody man is this? Doubtful it's dead, bloody blah. Then what does Duncan say? Archie? He's Macbeth's cousin. Yeah, look at the words, valiant, worthy. What do we learn about Macbeth? Just from those words. Look at the notes that you've written, if you've written any, which you should have done. Edie? Does he have Duncan's favour? Is he Duncan's favourite? Okay, so now we've got Duncan's favourite. Okay, you're looking for these little clues. These little clues open up such an avenue 
of analysis. They give us little aspects of his character, which is like a pebble in a pond. It just ripples out. So here, is he? he's marked, isn't he? He's marked by the witches. Here, he's got Duncan's favour. Where the hell is he? He's, he's stuck in the middle between the nasty, evil creatures and then, then this glorious ruler. He's pulled from pillar to push. We don't know where we are in the mix of this. It's all very distressing. Okay? Then we learn about the Thane of Cawdor. Okay? So the idea of Duncan's favour. Thane of Cawdor. Okay? So he's been awarded. He's glorious. Then where do we go? Possibly looking at the, one of the last things that Duncan says. Is he saying that bit about the absolute trust thing? Does he say it in that one? I don't think he does. Go on. Um, he says, Good. Is there anywhere in that scene where he says that he put on absolute trust? Or is that a bit later? No. No, have a look at just the, the second to the last thing that Duncan says. No more that thane of Cordor shall deceive our bosom interest. Oh, the irony. Deceive. What does to deceive mean? Actually, if you haven't circled that, can you circle it now? Okay. This bit here. No more shall that Thane of Cordor deceive our bosom interest. Who is the next Thane of Cordor? Macbeth. It's Macbeth. Is he going to do the same thing? Yeah? Can you find me the line where he is beginning to be deceptive? That germination is developing. You also have it on a silly piece of paper that I gave you yesterday. Eating? Keep going. Nope, keep going. Keep going. Nope, keep going. Go on. That, no, that one. Go on. No, one before. Let not light from over lack and deep inside. Yeah, good. Ellie? I was going to say my thought whose murder is yet but fantastical. Nice. My thought whose murder is yet but that fantastical. It's an illusion, but I've got the thought. It's germinating. He then says a little bit later, stars hide your fires, let not see my dark and my deep and dark desires, or something like that, okay? That is going to happen again. That's how he's presenting the Thane of Cordor to us. We don't know that Macbeth is going to be thinking that just yet, because we actually haven't met him. We don't know what colour hair he's got. We don't know whether he's got three legs. We don't know whether he's got six, six toes. We haven't seen him yet. And we're hoping, we're so hopeful, that he's going to be a good egg. He's going to be okay, because the last Thane of Cordor was going to be deceptive. He's now been dealt with. The next Thane of Cordor is going to be awesome, but we mustn't forget that the witches have already marked him, so something isn't going to be quite right. And then we get Act 1, Scene 3. Okay? So we need to focus on the deceive. Okay? Then what do we get? How, what is the next thing that we learn about Macbeth? Where else does his character appear? How has his character grown, developed, enhanced, progressed? The witches say truth to charms and dark No, I think that... No, I think we can go much earlier. Much, much earlier. He hasn't even on stage yet. Remember the witches mark him, Act 1, Scene 3. Where do they mark him? Before he's even appeared in the theatre, where do they mark him, Act 1, Scene 3? Um, Look, yeah, good. So the end of, the, end of their first bit, where they're kind of ranting about, okay? We hear a drum within. A drum, a drum, Macbeth.com. Dramatically, that's the, the audience cue. Here comes the man of the hour. Brilliant. We're all quite excited. This is the glorious god of war. My god, he's here! But don't forget, he's got a bit of a darker side that's kind of beginning to emerge. Then the weird sisters, hand in hand. We're being prepared. This is fate. We've been reminded. We marked it. We marked it, and he's here. because, Well, that's because that's what we have. The drum is what everyone else hears. We don't know what's going to happen in the rest of the play, and it's implied that neither do they, but they know that the drum represents Macbeth. Okay? So that... And that means that they know what that drum means. A little bit of dramatic irony, internal dramatic irony. The witches know more than... 
then some of the other characters on, the, on stage do. They certainly know more than we do. Okay? That gives them that sort of bizarre sense of power. And then we have the Weird Sisters. What do we know about the Weird Sisters? What does that tell us? What's the meaning of weird? And I brought you all the way down here. Well, Good. This idea of fate or destiny. Middle English of fate or destiny. Okay? Which means that then what happens later in this scene, not five days ago, not in a year's time, but in this scene, because they've already let that float around in the air, everything else that happens in the scene is fate. It's destiny. It's marked in the stars. Okay? Does that mean that he has the ability to make a choice? Don't know. Okay, so I'm going to put witch's drum. Then what happens? Thinking about his character, think about what we learn about him, how he's presented. The first thing he says is that he Good. Has the, witches, right? the first thing he mentions. We did this yesterday. Nice. Keep going. What else? How else is he shown to us? Remember, this is what has Shakespeare done in this story. Remember, this is just a story to show us his character. What is the next sort of facet of his character that we're shown? Good. Okay. Then you can compare to Banquo. Nice. Okay. Then where are we going? What else do we learn about Banquo? So this here, these are these command words. These are the imperatives. These are speak. And they go, no, and disappear. Okay? He then sort of fades off and kind of sort of gets himself lost in his thoughts. What then happens this bit here? What's the next thing that Macbeth says that tells us about his character, tells us about his obsession? Done. Nice. The children issue. Yeah? Who is Duncan's first kid? That is an issue for Macbeth. Archie. Malcolm, good. It continues through, doesn't it? And it's going to happen in the next scene. So all of this is now beginning to sort of tumble like a stack of cards. From there, where do we go? Are we going to wander around open, open doors or are we going to go inside Macbeth's head? Where do we go? Do we go inside Macbeth's head? Or do we just kind of wander around with everyone else? Miles? Uh, do we go inside his head? We go inside his head. Okay. So this is where we get that private internal thoughts. Is this the truth? And all and some of these kind of like building up to our exposure to the truth, possibly. Okay, so then we go into the asides. I think this is when we start the idea of truth and illusion. The truth is what's going on inside his head. The illusion is what comes out of his mouth. The reality, a false reality, is something else that you might think about as well. Okay, so we go on to the asides. Then possibly we kind of move into Act One, Scene Four. Look how much we've done. Look at what on earth is going on with this character. So much. It's very busy. Act One, Scene Four. We did this yesterday. What can you tell me? Nice. So we've got the split. Okay, good. Again, remember, that progresses, that develops, isn't it? So it's the start of this sort of fraying, perhaps, of their connection together. Banquo has to warn Macbeth. He shouldn't have to warn Macbeth, but he identifies that there's something not quite right. Maybe Macbeth has changed a slight hue. Maybe his, sort of, his shadow has kind of gone slightly off-centre. Okay? Then, where do we go, Edie? So in these asides, that's when you pick out those keywords. Okay. Right, the fraying between Banquo and Macbeth. Okay, so the seam that kind of binds them together is beginning ever so slightly to, to, come, to come apart. Where do we go? Act 1, scene 4. <clears throat> what do we learn about Macbeth? How does Shakespeare show us Macbeth? We've just finished a bit, and we did quite a lot of it yesterday, Ellie. That to Duncan, he like kind of offers himself, but then to himself privately, he's saying like something completely different. Good. 
public offering of loyalty. <clears throat> Private truth of betrayal. Okay? And that is the public, the public uh, sort of false reality, and then the private truth. Possibly, if you want to call it truth and illusion, you can do. Okay, so there is a bonkers amount of stuff that you could cover. You could actually probably do about 3,000 words on this and really, really go to town. I don't want 3,000 words because that's just silly. Okay, so you need to think carefully about what you can pick. So you need to be highly selective, but I need to have a flavour of his movement, of his, the idea of Macbeth, the concept of Macbeth, moving through those four scenes. Yeah? All of these are the what's. The hows are when you, die, when you go in. The why's. Is why, do we, why has he done this? Why has Shakespeare done this? What is this? Why is this important that he, he marks the witches in Act 1, Scene 1? Why is it important that Banquo constantly lays on this praise in Act 1, Scene 3, but there is this split in their characters? Why has he done this? And where is this going? Where is Macbeth's character sort of moving toward? Okay? So this bit, what has Shakespeare done? Or what has Shakespeare shown? Okay? Suggested. You can say if you wanted to. How, uh, so how has Shakespeare done this? This is where you do your language analysis. Okay, structure as well is important. So the order of the events in, in the scenes, who we see first. Why is it that we see Macbeth last? Where the hell is Lady Macbeth? We get three women on stage first off. That's quite unusual. They hold the attention of the, of the theatre. Lady Macbeth, the woman of the hour, we don't actually see until Act 1, Scene 5. And she's on her own. I mean, that's... Questionable, and it's also dramatic in itself as well. But we don't see Macbeth until Act 1, Scene 3. So that build up, that's the structure of how we're sort of reveal that. The why, okay, is so character value, drip feeding, okay, so this is sort of progressive. Um, also, sort of tied in what he wants to do to the audience. And then this idea of where does it go? So it kind of, it keeps going forward, keeps going forward, keeps going forward. That's where you make your cross-references, okay? So this is where your cross-references come into. Yeah? I need evidence. I need extracts. I, well, not extracts. So I need words from the text. How long is a quote, if you're going to use one, which you will be? How long is a quote? Eating? It's Bible 6, even shorter. Okay, do not copy out swathes of the text because you don't get marked on other people's words. You get marked on yours and what you do with other people's words. Okay, so you need to be highly, highly selective, really, really intensified. If you have a point and you can't find a quote, then discuss the importance of the point. If you find a quote and can't say anything about it, then move on. Find something else. Okay, the point and the quote have to match up with each other. They have to complement each other. How do you deal with context? that also kind of all that sort of is informed by context eating like salt. good you treat it like salt it is there to add flavor i don't want context paragraphs i don't want a bolt-on story only if it's relevant to the question at hand and what you've been asked to do okay it is there to enhance the analysis not there to replace it okay so you have to kind you have to make sure you find that that balance. Right, are there any questions about what I've asked you to do?